Hello, welcome to Holistically Speaking. I'm Morala DeVoe, your host. I hope you joined us for the uh, live show that we had on Friday night with Dr. Joshua Green. We had a wonderful show with him, and if you missed it live, we'll be showing it. It'll be airing next week during our regular time, so we hope you have a chance to catch that. Um, also coming up, we're going to have a show on infant massage, which will be wonderful for all of all those of you who have babies, infants at home, and uh, learning how to massage your baby for uh, nurturing and for healing. And uh, I'm really looking forward to that show. I'm sure it'll be very um, instructive. And also, we're going to have a panel on autism. Hopefully you had a chance to watch Autism the Musical. We showed you the first clip on our show a week ago. And um, if you didn't, we highly recommend that you go online and look it up, Autism the Musical. It's a wonderful um, real life story of uh, how they uh, put this musical together with autistic children. And uh, it's really, really uh, wonderful and eye-opening. And on that theme, we're going to have a, a panel for you in a couple of weeks, um, so stay tuned for that. But our show today is actually all about hydration. Um, we, uh, just because the, as the summer was coming up, we had started talking about how much water we're drinking. And, you know, I historically had not been a good water drinker. I just never developed a habit of really drinking water. So I, I needed to develop some techniques to get me to really uh, stay hydrated. And so I brought some of those for you today and I'll be sharing with you some of my, my tips and tricks. And I brought some goodies for you on the table here, which is looking kind of pretty. Um, but hydration, so why is this so important? Why is hydration something that we need to think about so actively for our health? And of course, you've probably heard the statistic, not statistic, the percentage that we're roughly somewhere between 65 to 70 or 65 to 75 or uh, some adults between 50 to 75 percent water. So the majority of the water in our body is obviously inside our cells and of course our blood and all of that. You know, we're not very liquid looking. But um, water, uh, our hydration, our water levels actually decrease as we age. Infants are actually uh, newborns. They're more like 80% water. Um, so, you know, it drops to about 65 to 70% by age one. But then as we age, you know, it's, um, some people have described aging as a process of demineralization and gradual dehydration. So, you know, dehydration contributes to, you know, things as simple as uh, skin aging and wrinkles. So if you're dehydrated, you're more likely to uh, get wrinkled more quickly. Um, cells age more quickly. So, you know, gray hairs and, um, and you know, the, just those simple things are uh, just a, a little symptom of being dis de chronically dehydrated. But... Um, Hydration is so much more than that. One of the things that we often don't think about is the fact that we are electrical beings. We are uh, condu uh, conductive, you know, there's all of our neuron communications, our nerve tissues, and all of our muscle tissue is considered electrical tissue. Um, it, they're tissues that need to be really well hydrated in order for cell communication to happen effectively. In fact, uh, not only do you need to be well hydrated, you need to be well mineralized. And that's where a, a key word that I'm sure you've heard before comes in, and I'll talk about it in a little bit. It's electrolytes. Being mineralized is you need to have electrolytes um, coming into your body through the water and uh, the foods that you eat. And I'm going to, you're seeing there are some ways in which you can add electrolytes to your water, and I'm going to tell you about them in a little while. So uh, muscle tissue and neurons uh, need proper hydration to communicate effectively. So when you're starting to be um, dehydrated, you, uh, one of the first signs is fatigue. 
Um, you can't be fully energized and energy can't move effectively through your body if you're dehydrated. So what happens, a lot of people are chronically fatigued and then resorting to sugary and caffeinated drinks to get them going, to get that perk up when really what you are is dehydrated. Um, other thing, in addition to fatigue and accelerated aging and those things that I've mentioned before, um, there is a book that I'll show you at the end of the show. It's called Your Body's Many Cries for Water. And when you read that book, um, the author makes uh, some really in surprising connections with deteriorating health and chronic conditions and dehydration. So, uh, you know, anything from diabetes to behavior problems and mood problems. So um, I highly recommend that you check that book out. So let's talk about hydrating effectively and the different sources of water. Some people ask me, um, should I be having, you know, what's better? Is it bottled water better than uh, tap water or, you know, what about my well water? So let's talk a little bit about those. Um, Ideally, you know, I, I like to look at nature and see where, where ancestrally were people getting their water and typically we would be drinking water from springs. Um, so some people argue that the best water that you could get is if you could go, you know, up a mountain or into a spring and, and collect your own water. Um, when most of us, like the, my case, uh, living in cities and towns have uh, municipal water, uh, there are some things to consider that you may want to have removed from your water through a good filter and so, there are some of the chemicals that get added to water just to remove bacteria like either chlorine or chloramine. Um, Burlington city water still has chlorine as um, kind of the disinfectant in water but most other municipalities around Burlington have chloramine and uh, chloramine is a newer chemical. It's actually the combination of chlorine and ammonia. And the reason why some municipalities made that change is because uh, chlorine dissipates, it evaporates from water after a while, whereas when you combine chlorine with ammonia, it doesn't dissipate, so it come, it's still very much present in your water out of the tap. Of course, there are a lot of concerns. Um, many people have concerns with, with both chlorine and chloramine in your water, so uh, I recommend filtering it out. And then there's another um, chemical in the water which uh, was added for health reasons, um, but now there's very heated debate as to whether we should really be adding it to our water, and that's fluoride. Um, a lot of uh, different uh, voices speak for and against it. Um, so I'll, I'll let you investigate that and uh, do some research on that to come up with your own uh, conclusion. But I'd certainly choose to remove it from my water. So, you know, your regular pitcher water uh, filters don't really remove the, the chemicals, the chloramine and, and fluoride. So you need um, uh, filters that have m several layers of different density um, rocks and minerals that will uh, eliminate the chem those chemicals from your water. Um, so that's an important consideration. The, another alternative, which is what I choose to do, um, is here in Burlington at City Market, you can get reverse osmosis water, which is a very clean, very clean water, because some of these filters can be a pretty significant investment. Then you might have well water, so you don't have to think about the chloramine or the fluoride, but even if you have well water, it can be a really good thing to do. Is, uh, testing your water can be a really good thing to do. It could be a good idea. Because um, you want to know what's in your soil. Sometimes if your well is maybe in the path of a farm runoff, um, you de never know what fertilizers may be getting into your well. Um, so it's always a good idea to have your water tested to see what minerals are there, if there's anything in your water that you may want to, to filter out. So um, then finally, obviously, bottled spring water. Um, you know, we're pretty uh, green and holistic here at Holistically Speaking, so we're not fans of all the plastic that uh, we add to the environment with the bottled water. But, you know, it can be a... It can be a, a pretty handy uh, solution to have. As you can see on the table here, 
I have all my, you know, several different sizes of glass jars. That's how I choose to carry my water and I don't have to deal with the plastic, don't have to worry about it. This is, this one over here is a kombucha bottle and I just, you know, take the label off and these are just regular mason jars. I think this was like a sauerkraut jar. So I recycle my glass bottles and that's what I use for carrying my water. And the other thing too with plastic is that a plastic bottle is always going to leach some of those uh, plastic petrochemicals into your water, especially the last thing you want to do is leave a plastic bottle with water in the sun. The, the heating of the water uh, definitely activates that plastic into your, into your water, so uh, that's not the water you want to be drinking. So another thing that is a pretty heated debate in the water and hydration world is uh, acid uh, water versus alkaline water. And you'll hear a lot of proponents of alkaline water saying that we should only be drinking alkaline water and we should not be drinking acid water. And there's a lot of debate on both sides. Um, again, I like to look at nature and look to see, so what's water in nature? When, If we were getting our water directly from nature, uh, from the spring, what would that be? And some springs are alkaline for sure, and some springs are actually slightly acidic. So um, the truth is your body does um, adjust its pH. And to clarify a little bit, if you're not um, too familiar with this concept of uh, your body's pH or um, acid or alkaline water, you know, I'm not really a chemist, but, you know, all substances in nature are either... Um, alkaline or acid or balanced uh, in the, the scale is a um, 0 to 14 scale, I believe, and pH balance is a 7. So anything above a 7 is uh, alkaline and anything below a 7 is acidic. So water, spring water ranges anywhere from like 5, 5.5 to about 8. So you have both acid water and you have alkaline water. A lot of the proponents of alkaline water drinking say it's because uh, our body's meant to be alkaline and that our blood is meant to be, be alkaline. And that's true. Our blood is slightly alkaline. It's, I think, just about 7.5 7 or 7.4. Um, so it's just slightly alkaline. And it's always, your body always works very hard to keep that uh, pH level pretty steady. Um, in fact, your body would go into severe crisis if you were to go too alkaline or too acid in your blood. So your body's constantly adjusting um, your pH levels throughout your body. Um, whereas, for example, your skin is, uh, tends to be more acidic. So um, we're not purely one single pH, every different tissue, our stomach, our stomach acid is incredibly acidic. That's a pH of about two. So uh, whether you're drinking slightly acid or slightly alkaline water is not a big, uh, not really a significant issue. Um, but obviously if you're getting, it's important if you're getting, um, if you're getting enough minerals from your foods, then your water is less of an issue. But um, our modern diet tends to be very acidic. Uh, coffee and sugar and fried foods and uh, lots of protein and even refined grains can have a, an incredibly acidic effect on your body. So that's also why some people might say that you want to drink more alkaline water instead of uh, acidic water. So um, again, you can get uh, pH strips and test your water so, so that you know, but the most important thing is really getting clean, good quality water and the pH level, in my opinion, isn't necessarily as significant. But you can do some research on that and see what you find. So let's talk about when to drink, how to drink. As I mentioned, I was never one who could stay properly hydrated. I was chronically dehydrated. My lips were constantly peeling. Um, that could be another sign if you're, you know, always needing to apply chapstick. That's, uh, that could be a sign of dehydration. And your body, you, you, you only need to lose about 2% a, a of your body water, your moisture to start 
feeling thirsty and dehydrated. So it doesn't take a whole lot to, to get into that uh, dehydration. And we become dehydrated through, you know, uh, stress and of course exercising and excess alcohol consumption, as you know. And then of course, um, uh, stomach issues, diarrhea or excessive vomiting can make us dehydrated very quickly. And uh, I'll talk about hydration for extreme cases uh, like that in a little while. So the best thing to do to stay properly hydrated is to drink water throughout the day. And most importantly, this doesn't necessarily mean that with your meals, most people drink their water and their liquid at meal times. And that's actually not the best thing for your digestion. Like I said just a minute ago, your uh, stomach is supposed to be very acidic to help, you know, have really strong digestion and help break those food molecules apart. So when you drink a lot of water, when you're eating, you're going to be diluting your stomach acid a little bit. So drinking lots of liquids with your meals is not the best thing for digestion. But the best thing to do to stay hydrated is to, to drink throughout the day. And not just a sip or two at a time, because what might happen is you take a sip and then you forget about it. So to get yourself properly hydrated, you need to you know, take a few sips at a time and use things. Instead of serving yourself a little glass at a time, you can do what I do, which is what I need. You know, I, I use a big mason jar, like a half gallon mason jar, or not, not a half gallon. <laughs> but, you know, a large enough um, mason jar so that uh, I have a lot of water in front of me and I can see that uh, I'm either keeping up with my hydration or maybe I'm lagging, so I need to take a little sip. So I'm going to take a sip right now. So um, having enough water in front of you at all times so that you can, you know, it serves as a cue to drink more and to stay hydrated is a... Is, a good way to, to get up there. It certainly is what's worked for me and helped me get back into hydration. So how much water should be should you be drinking? You know, for a long time we heard uh, eight glasses a day. And if you think of eight glasses, usually in a glass is about eight ounces, maybe 10 ounces. That's somewhere between 64 to 80 ounces a day. And I would say that that for adults especially, that's kind of the bare minimum. Um, it makes more sense to me to look at what's your body weight. You know, a slender woman who weighs 115 pounds couldn't possibly have the same hydration requirements as a very athletic, robust man of 220 pounds. So I like to think of hydration, and this is a formula that you uh, is, is now pretty popular and kind of... Uh, you've probably heard about is taking your body weight and dividing that in half. So let's say you weigh 160 pounds, you divide that in half and that would be 80. So that 80 is the number of ounces that you want to aim for a day, drinking 80 ounces a day. And for some people, when you do that math, that can be a lot more water than you're drinking right now. And it might be a little bit of a challenge to try to get there. So you're going to need the big jar to keep you going throughout the day. And uh, we were having a conversation about how much water you're for kids or adults, you know, uh, how much water do we really need? Is it that number? And I think the, the formula is helpful to give you direction as to uh, where to aim. But what you'll discover is that when you start to be truly hydrated, you will naturally want more water. You, you will know thirst better. You will distinguish thirst better and you'll stay hydrated a lot more effectively. You won't be needing to think about the formula so much. And you'll find that it, you're likely in that vicinity anyway. Um, one of the things that happens with dehydration is that you lose the sensitivity to the feeling of thirst. And so most people who are dehydrated confuse thirst with hunger. And so they think that uh, they're, the, you know, they think they're hungry and they go, you know, have something to eat when in fact it's their, body, their body's call for, for water. So when you get to a point of being fully hydrated, it feels so good to drink water that you just naturally find yourself gravitating to pouring yourself a glass of water and it's a lot easier to stay hydrated that way. So let's talk about 
water versus soda versus coffee or tea. It's a question I get all the time. Um, and I'll, since you're looking at them right now, I'll show you some of the things I do to pep up my water and get it a little bit more exciting. This one here is, uh, as you can see, it's just some pretty slices of lemon and lime. And all I did was just slice them up and put them in my jar and poured water over it. And it's a really light, without even having to squeeze it, it's a really light lemon flavor, which makes it very easy to drink. In fact, I had to slow myself down before the show so that you would still be able to see the water with a lemon. This here is some raspberries. So that's another thing. I just popped those in a little while ago and um, it'll give it a really light raspberry flavor. If you're into drinking seltzer, flavored seltzer, this is actually a better way to go. And I'll, um, One of the things with uh, seltzer versus water is that adding the carbonation to the water does make it a little bit more acidic. So, uh, in fact, some of the carbonated drinks can go as low as two um, in the uh, pH scale, whereas, as I mentioned, uh, your water is typically going to be somewhere between 5.5 and 8. Um, so I would recommend just doing the berries with the water. And this here is just some mint. And mint grows like weeds in most gardens, so you won't have any shortage of that. And uh, I just added the mint into the water and it gives it a nice little flavor. Um, but if you put this bottle in the sunshine, and of course this is a glass bottle, if you put uh, your bottle of water on your windowsill and you let it get some sun, you'll get sun tea. That Those leaves will seep some of their uh, richness into the water and you'll get It'll, they'll discolor into the water, so you'll get this really nicely flavored um, tea-like drink, but it's just water with the essences of the, of the leaves. Um, and you can do that with mint, you can do that with basil is also delicious, and you can experiment with all kinds of different herbs that, that you like. So, you know, adding these things to, oh, another uh, popular one uh, is cucumbers. It, they're so mild in flavor that you wouldn't think it would flavor your water, but it just gives us this nice little crispness that feels very refreshing. Uh, so it's a great thing to do in the summer and you know, it just becomes more exciting to drink water that looks pretty too. Um, so let's talk about coffee and tea and soda uh, because it's a common question that I get. And you know, you actually, can find there's some studies you can find research that says that you can get some hydration from drinking uh, caffeinated drinks. You know there is obviously water in there, and your body does extract it. So if you're absolutely parched and all you have is a coke or uh, you know ginger ale or a cup of tea, you are going to uh, quench some of that dehydration with any beverage. Um, is it the best choice? Obviously not. Um, Caffeine is, in fact, um, oh, the word's escaping me. Um, it dehydrates you because it's a diuretic. Uh, so caffeine is a diuretic, and it's going to essentially draw water out of your body. So when caffeine consumption is pretty high, so if you're drinking multiple cups of coffee a day, that's actually going to be contributing more to be making you dehydrated than hydrating you. You know, one cup of coffee isn't probably going to, you know, be significant, but off, hopefully you're keeping up your hydration uh, with water throughout the day. And then there's the matter of sugar. So a lot of people don't realize that uh, sugar also has a dehydrating effect because um, the higher your blood sugar, when you're in, this becomes a problem for, for people who are becoming diabetic, um, the higher your blood sugar, your body needs to do something with that blood sugar. And oftentimes when it can't get it out of your bloodstream enough, either by converting it and store it into fat and storing it as uh, fatty deposits, it's going to look to get rid of it quickly through your urine. And so when blood uh, glucose is too high, it's going to make your body um, expel a lot of your water to get rid of the sugar. And so usually when you have someone who's drinking a lot of sugary drinks and they feel thirsty, they're going to go for more sugary drinks, you know, for more soda. So if all you're drinking is soda, that's definitely, as you know, uh, with the sugar issue, um, 
it's definitely not the best thing to do for your health, and it's certainly not the best way to hydrate. Um, and then when you get to the point of uh, significant dehydration, dehydration um, or, or a, a significant need for quick hydration, let me put it that way. Um, let's say you were hiking or um, working, you know, did a vigorous workout. Um, and, and then even beyond that, when you're uh, sick, you've had, you know, a stomach bug and you've become dehydrated or if you went partying uh, last night and you're somewhat uh, dehydrated, you know, it manifests in headaches and, you know, weakness, um, you, you want to quickly hydrate. And of course, this is when a lot of people will reach for sports drinks. Um, you know, and of course, you know that the sports drinks have the sugar and the magic word electrolytes. And people say, oh yeah, you know, you're gonna drink a sports drink so that you get the electrolytes to hydrate quicker. So I'm not a fan of sports drinks a lot. Uh, a key reason for that is that most of them are made with high fructose corn syrup, which uh, I'm not a fan of. And honestly, because you can make your own uh, sports drink yourself at home by adding uh, lemon and sea salt um, minerals to your water. Electrolytes are essentially mineral salts. So take really good quality water a good quality salt, add it to your water, add some lemon, add some maple syrup, and there you go. You have your own uh, homemade sports drink, which will be better than anything else. So I wanted to tell you more about the minerals on uh, the table, but we've run out of time, so we'll have to leave it for another show. This is the book I mentioned, Your Body's Many Cries for Water, You're Not Sick, You're Thirsty. And my website where you can find a lot other, you know, many other resources, transformation1.com. You can find recipes and another video that I have on water. So I hope that you found this helpful and that the tips for uh, adding pizzazz to your water will help you stay hydrated. Thank you for joining us today, and I look forward to having you on the show again next week where we'll be talking about uh, infant massage. Thank you for joining us.